Greetings Church, I hope you are all well. God's peace to everyone. My dear friends, I'm so sorry that we have not been able to meet together in person at this Christmas time to celebrate the coming of Jesus and worship him together. But myself and Sam, in conjunction with uh, one of our trustees and our, our staff members, we all spoke um, this evening and came to the conclusion that in order to make sure that we didn't take any unnecessary risks with anybody's health before Christmas, that this was the best thing to do in light of all of the new announcements that have been made by the government today. And as you know from the very beginning of the coronavirus, that's what we've sought to do, to follow the government advice as best as we can in order to protect you and to protect anyone else who would be coming into church. So it's been a really difficult, difficult decision to make some hard conversations, but as I said, you know, we never want to risk your health or well-being. So we ask for your grace, my friends. I'm, I'm sure you, like me, were probably really looking forward to being able to come together. But what we want to do to bless you and to still enable us to have a time together as a community where we can celebrate Christmas and worship is we produce this recording instead, which is full of all of the different components, including some carols and readings that would have been part of the service done by the wonderful different people who are going to come and do it there. So I hope this blesses you. I hope you enjoy it. And um, if there is a, another upside from this, as well as being able to share it and uh, re-watch it if you want to, then of course you can sing as loud as you would like to along with some of these carols without having to worry because you'll be in the confines of your own comfortable space, no doubt, as you watch this. I want us to begin by um, having some time in a few moments of quiet reflection in some darkness. Now that may seem like a, an odd thing um, to do, but Sam and I have been incredibly moved over the years by going on the first uh, Advent weekend over to Salisbury Cathedral and taking part in their darkness into light service. It's always been an incredibly powerful um, experience and really felt at the beginning of Christmas. So in the spirit of that, we are going to engage with some darkness. And what I'd like to do is just to, um, before we get to that moment, uh, just read um, some thoughts around that to share with you. And just to touch as well on this scripture that we've been looking at, which the culmination of comes today as we celebrate the Prince of Peace. So as we begin this evening, we will be making this recording surroundings as dark as possible by switching off lights. Darkness can be both a comforting and a frightening place. A place where we dream, where our hearts and minds wander towards the divine, where we imagine what our life and the lives of those around us might one day become is also the place where our fears come to life, where we dread the future, worry over our decisions, and where our vulnerabilities feel most profound. We have borne witness to many of these moments over the last year, as we have watched the world, our towns, villages, and families touched by the challenges of COVID. In this Christmas service we hold the tension of those fears and dreams in light of this Advent season and all it brings. Because into the dark, dimly lit and forgotten places of our world, into the parts of our lives that we fear or worry about and into the darkness of our hearts, the light comes. Sometimes we don't recognise the light at first, but just like God's grace, the light always comes. So as we light our first candle this evening, we will see its impact upon the darkness. And then as light multiplies, spreads and sweeps across, 
and as we listen to the ancient stories of the faith, we will embrace together the hope of the coming King. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. I look from afar, and behold, I see the power of God coming, and a cloud covering the whole earth. Go out to meet him and say, Are you him that should come to rule the people of Israel? High and low, rich and poor, one with another. Go out to meet him and say, Hear, shepherd of Israel, him that leads Joseph like a sheep, are you him who should come? Stir up your strength and come to rule your people of Israel. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile, until the Son of God appears. Rejoice, rejoice. Shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, the rod of Jesse, free thine own from Satan's tyranny, from depths of hell. Thy
Isaiah chapter 42 verses 5 to 7 Thus says the Lord who created the heavens and stretched them out who spread out the earth and what comes from it who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it I am the Lord Yahweh I have called you in righteousness I will take you by the hand and keep you I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those sit in darkness. Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah and when he opened the book he found the place where it is written the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed upon him. We believe in Jesus Christ, our Saviour, and liberator, the expression of God's redeeming and restoring love, the mark of humanness, source of courage, power and love, God of God, light of light, ground of our humanity. Through his death and resurrection, God gives life and dignity, provides the content of our vision offers the context of our struggle, promises liberation to the oppressor and the oppressed, hope to those in despair. We believe in the activity of the Holy Spirit who revives our decaying soul, resurrects our defeated spirits, renews our hope of wholeness, and reminds us of our responsibility in ushering God's new order here and now. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Oh,
Christmas, everyone. Stay safe. Be well. Much love. I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2 and verse 6 and 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan, earth stood hard as iron, water Yet what can
read in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 35. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, the town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are the highly favoured, the God is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greetings it might be. But the angel said to her, Don't, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the Holy One will be born and will be called the Son of God. The Birth of Jesus Christ Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband, Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived from her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not, until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Love
reading is from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 to 33. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. This reading is from Revelation chapter 22, verse 1 to 5, and then finishing with verse 20. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of the lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Saviour reigns. Let men their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and the wonders of his love and the wonder wonders of his love and the wonders the wonders of his love joy to the world the Lord is come, let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven. Isaiah 60, 1-3 Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people, but the Lord will rise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness 
of your rising. Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one all things earthly and heavenly, fill you with peace and goodwill and make you partakers of the divine nature. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. O come, ye who come, ye to Bethlehem. Come and be. Oh, come let us out.